first of all, let's just take the sound that's coming out of the amplifier, right here, the, the one thing we're listening to, and I'm going to reroute it so that it goes through that filter. But I'm going to turn the cutoff frequency of the filter way up so that hopefully we won't really hear much effect of the filtering. Let's see what we get. Yeah, it's still pretty bright, but now I can change the cutoff frequency to filter out some of the higher frequencies of that sound. So it can be quite muffled, completely muffled, or I can let some of the high frequencies through. And I can increase the resonance or the reverberation within that filter so that it becomes more focused if I want. And now I think it would be kind of fun if that were controlled by a sawtooth oscillator uh, so that it does a quick filter sweep with each note. So I'm going to take the sawtooth output of this oscillator, same rate as the note rate that we're hearing, but I'm going to use that to control... Oh, I probably want to have some control over its amplitude, though, don't I? Well, let's see. Let's just send it up here to the control input and see what we get. That's kind of pleasing, actually. And by focusing in just the right place... I get that kind of characteristic wah that I'd like. What I was thinking might be fun would be to take that signal and turn it upside down just to see what happens. So I'm going to send it into this mixer here, which has both positive and negative outputs, so I can see what, how, if it's any better by turning that sawtooth upside down. Let's see. Well, it's certainly different, because now it's sweeping, doing sudden sweeps downward instead of upward. So it's like pew, 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 instead of wah, wah, wah. Well, I kind of like the wah better. So I'm going back to my wah sound here. But maybe I'd like to just generally, over a slower rate, have some kind of up and down control of the rate of the oscillator. So I'm going to take a whole other oscillator here, this one that's at a low frequency, and I'm going to take a triangle waveform out of that and use that to also control the frequency of the oscillator. So now I would expect that the oscillator will slowly go up and down uh, over the course of uh, a slower period of time. Not a whole lot of change. Maybe I need to amplify that a little bit. So I'm going to send it through this mixer. Let's see, what's going on here? I'm kind of confusing myself. Okay, so this one. Taking the sawtooth wave, which is controlling the filter. I'm going to take this triangle wave, send it into this mixer, and then send the output of the mixer over here to control the frequency of the oscillator. And in fact, I could even take a ribbon controller. I have a ribbon controller up top just outside the view of the camera, but uh, it's a sort of continuous voltage controller from a, a metal ribbon. I can take the output of that to also control the output of the oscillator, which now gives me the ability to make it higher or lower. And if I do that and control the filter frequency at the same time, I can get quite a range of sounds there.
And maybe just to get one more little bit of variety out of this, I'm going to take the signal that we're listening to, which is the output of the filter, and instead of sending it directly to the, the speaker, I'm going to send it over to a multiple where I can send it both to the speaker and to a reverberator and then mix some of the reverberated sound in with the natural uh, unaltered sound. So I'm going to try that. The reverberator is probably also out of the view of the camera, but uh, let's give it a try. So I'm going to plug it in there. This is just something that allows me to split the signal. So I can take the signal and send it back where it was to the speaker to hear it, like so. And I can also take that same signal and send it through a reverberator, just a sort of spring reverberator like in an old guitar amplifier, and add some of the reverberated sound in. So here's the, the unreverberated, and now I can add in some reverberated sound. Here's only reverberated. That's not very strong, is it? Why is that? There we go. Some of the contacts are a little dirty. You've got to make sure it's plugged in properly. So there's the weirdly reverberated version of the sound. Here's the unreverberated, and here's a mix of the two. So now with all of that mess, and with control of my ribbon controller, filter frequency knob. I can get quite a wide variety of sounds. Whenever I get a sound that I like, then I could use a keyboard to play different notes using that sound. Or I could simply record the sound, splice it up, and use it as a sample in some context full of other sounds. So the Moog synthesizer, as you can see, takes a little time to design just the sound that you want. And once you do design the sound that you want, you may never find it again. So you want to have the recorder running. It's really a synthesizer that's better suited for use in a studio like this, where you have the time to record it, play around with it, get just the sound that you want, commit that to tape, and then use it somewhere else. You probably wouldn't want to use this in a live performance and make your audience sit around and watch all of what I just made you watch. But I did this just as a demonstration so that you can see the different components in the synthesizer. The oscillators, which can be used both as, at audible frequencies or at sub-audio frequencies as control signals, going through a voltage controlled amplifier, a voltage controlled filter, and off to a reverberator. All those sounds get mixed together here, and this is the end result.